using pages through iCloud.com. Now this is for people that might not have access to an iPad or an iPhone in order to do creation in this way, but still want to see the benefits of using uh, pages as a tool, um, specifically in this case for creating their own EPUBs. So I'm gonna go into uh, Safari on my desktop and I'm just gonna type in iCloud.com and go to that page. Uh, here you'll find it here. Now the first thing it's going to ask you to do is to sign into your account. Now I've already signed in so it's going to take me into it but ordinarily it's just going to ask you for your Apple ID and password um, so you just need to go into it and then you'll see here that, that actually you actually you have access to all of these tools um, you know natively on any device that you're working on if you do this through a web browser um, so there are some similarities obviously this is this is all of my cloud-based um, stuff um, but there'll be some subtle differences so I'm going to go into pages and just show you how you would go about doing this um, on, on any device that you might be on so when I open pages you'll see that it, it looks vaguely familiar the coloring is is the same you know so I know I'm in pages if it was a keynote it would be blue and if it was uh, numbers it would be in the uh, green color I'm going to tap on the plus at the top here uh, it's going to open a new tab for me so I've still got access to all of my files I've got a new tab here where it's going to take me to the creation page so here you can see all of the templates uh, again exactly the same as you would see if you were doing this on your Mac, if you were doing this um, on your iPad in the applications, I'm on the web browser to do this. And you'll see that I can still access those landscape uh, books or the portrait books up here. Um, and if you tap on the arrow, you'll go through all of the different range of templates that exist for you. I'm gonna go into uh, one of the books now. Let's just use this textbook. If I double tap it, it's gonna open up that uh, book template for me and then we'll go through what that screen looks like and how you can utilize this like I said through the web browser as opposed to using the application. So once this loads up you'll see that I have that template preloaded on my screen and the tools across the top very familiar um, if you've used this on a Mac before slightly different if you've done this on an iPad because the the functions might be in a slightly different place but we'll go through each one of those uh, across the top now. This first one here is your sidebar. This is um, useful to have, uh, sorry not your sidebar, this is just your additional tools um, that used to sit above the sidebar if you were doing this on iPad. Just where you can go through those those um, useful tools that you might want. Specifically I suppose um, you want to talk to my students about doing this, the word count because it's usually something people want to check if they're handing anything in as an assignment. Um, you can also change the size that this appears on your screen. So again, this is quite useful if you want to see everything that you're working on in one uh, one window, um, if you want to see it in more detail and then scroll through it, etc. Your undo and redo. This is the same on, on all platforms. This is where your chaptering will come in. So your table of contents, if you want to add in chapters, and again, similar to any other videos I've done on this, gives you that really, really simple way of, of adding in some chapters into your book. And then we come into the content kind of section. So plus, if we want to add a new page. So again, lots and lots of pages in here that you can choose from and then obviously edit. Next one along then, your line breaks, etc. Uh, depending on how you want to, to format the page, if you want footnotes, uh, headers, all of those page numbers, etc. Specifically though, if you want to also link anything in here. So I know lots of people when they're creating eBooks want to have uh, you know hyperlinks in their books to go to different places but also recently I was talking to someone about having like a contents page on the book as opposed to being a separate thing here where you could just link going through different parts of the book so again you can have this as a link to a web page an email address or a page within the book and then we have kind of the more common ones that you'll be used to seeing if you if you work on on an iPad in terms of the ability to add in tables charts um, text boxes and shapes this one if you work on an iPad these these are kind of one and the same here it's separated out and then your media button which again then has some options to add in your image um, and your image gallery the image gallery being uh, like a slideshow of pictures that you can have all on one page again because you're not having to pay for this you know put your things nice front and center and have it all nice and positioned um, it can look really really nice on your page Coming across then, this one is your collaboration tool. If you want to share this and collaborate with other people on the same document at the same time, they could be working 
on their iPad, they can be do this working on their phone, on a Mac, uh, or in the cloud. Um, and then your general settings. So this is where you, you can have all of those sort of different um, things that you might need to change in your settings of your document. And over here is your format tool. So again, if I just liken this to the iPad version, if you're if you're sim familiar with looking at that, you would ordinarily have the plus and the paintbrush. The plus is these kind of things over here. The paintbrush is the formatting thing. So that stays exactly the same. So if I tap on the text, for example, the formatting changes. If I tap on a picture, the formatting changes. So that is where you would change anything you need to change. So again, within there, if I go back to the text, we can change uh, lots of things around the text box, the text format, the, the um, font style, the size, the location, all of those things that we'd be used to doing, plus arranging those things if you want them at the front or the backs, depending on how you want to separate those things on the page. So other than that, it's the same as the video that I did um, based on pages on the iPad and how to get started. The, the similar functions are all there. There's a couple of changes are that within the media, obviously you're not gonna have the ability to draw on the on the page. That's that's very much about doing that on the iPad, that really, really um, useful tool of having the iPad and being able to write directly onto it. But everything else is really there in terms of being able to add in um, the pictures that you want to add into your books as well. So lots and lots of things that you can add in as you're working through. So hopefully that's a useful tool. Um, again, from an editing point of view, you know it's it's a case of just moving boxes around and designing. But again, check out this other video which might support you more in the editing functions. So mentioned though is under the spanner. If you want to actually download any of this, um, you can obviously download a copy uh, so that you can utilize this now. Obviously, depending on what platform you're on, you're not going to be able to download this as a Pages document if you don't have Pages on the machine, but you can download it as an EPUB, which is going to give you that format to be able to download onto your device. Now, obviously, it, because you're kind of creating a book, it's going to give you the title, the author, etc. So useful to add those in. And then you can just simply tap download, and that's going to create that file for you which you can then use to share with other people as long as they've got um, a reader for EPUB, they'll be able to access that book. So there we go, thanks again for watching. Uh, hopefully this has been of use. Uh, if there are any comments, please leave them in the comment section below and I'd be more than happy to help anybody in their use of these tools.